All right. Hello, everyone. This is Bill Van Orsdell from Book Fuel. We have today's Wednesday web. I think you cut out, Bill. Uh, and the tool we're going to talk about today is your author website. I'm joined today by Rebecca Calejo. She's from Section 101. She is an expert uh, in helping authors and other artists build their website so they can engage with their fans and find their super fans. Say hello, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar today. I'm very excited to be a, a guest today. Thanks, Rebecca. So uh, just before we get started, I want to let everybody know that I'm recording our event for Playback Later, and within 24 hours, you should receive an email, and the email should have a link uh, to Playback the whole webinar. So if you miss anything and you want to listen to it again, you're welcome to do so. You can also send a request to me, uh, bill.vanorsdell at bookfuel.com. I am happy to send you the slides, but I just want to remind you at uh, Rebecca's request, these are slides that are proprietary to Section 101, so please don't send them out to everyone else in the universe. We do appreciate that very much. Uh, and also, I'd like a very interactive session. Um, Rebecca and I will pause. We will take your questions. We will acknowledge them. We'll try to answer them right away, or we'll put them in the parking lot and capture them at the end or for a follow-up. I encourage you to throw a question up in the question box. I see David said hi. Hi, David. Thank you very much. So David can hear us well, too. Okay, so last element, checklist. You are ready to start marketing your author brand and maybe your books. Even if your book is not done, even if your book is not in the market, you need to have an author website. You're going to use this as the central place where you're going to start building your platform with, for, for your fans. And even if your book is not ready, and not out yet, you should have one. You should have a blog on there. You should start building your permission-based email list. We'll talk about those. And really, this is pretty simple. If you have a computer and a web browser, uh, you can do this. You don't have to be uh, some HTML coding wizard to make this work for you. Uh, and Rebecca is going to tell us about how easy this is as she walks through some of the top tips for how to make a good-looking author website. So with that, I want to turn it over to Rebecca. Um, she's an expert. They've helped a lot of authors at Section 101. And uh, Rebecca, tell us a little bit about your background, and let's get started. OK, great. So uh, first off, uh, just a little bit about what Section 101 is. And uh, we are the premier uh, website platform for authors. We also work with um, musicians and artists and other people in the entertainment industry. But we have all of the built-in features that you need to market and promote yourself um, all on your own branded, you know, personalized website. And what I do at Section 101 um, now is mostly I, I deal with partnerships and biz, business development. Um, but I've been with them for over four years. And in my past, I've worked with tons of uh, authors in developing their websites from you know, marketing strategies to creative development and implementation, and making sure that the authors are really achieving their goals on, on their website and across um, their online platforms. So that's just a little bit about me and Section 101. Um, so today's topic, uh, you know, effective websites. Uh, you may be asking, why do you need a website? Why, do you, why does it need to be effective? Well, websites are a vital part of any marketing plan, and it enables your readers to find you and your book online. It also increases your promotional efforts and your chances of discovery, and it pushes and drives your sales. The good news is you don't have to be technologically savvy to have a beautiful and effective website, and Section 101 is a great solution for you. We can help you get started in setting up your website in minutes and train you on all of our amazing built-in tools. So with that, uh, what we're going to do next. Rebecca, I want to jump in and ask you a quick question. So mm -hmm. I know we're going to look at, you've got a lot of great examples, and we're going to look at a whole bunch of them. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the first questions I have for you is, so I know I need a domain name or, or a URL. You know, it's going to be BillVanOrsdell.com, or it's going to be, Bill Van Orsdell, or, or it'll be the Bill Van Orsdell.com, as though I'm the only one out there. Um, so I, I think that you all provide that service so I can register for a domain, domain name through you. Do you have any advice? And it, it, tell me if that's wrong. And do you have any advice if, if I'm on the call today and I haven't already gotten my 
author my artist website name and I'm thinking about making one for my book or my series name or my pen name or my author name. What's your advice about domain names other than get one tonight when you, as soon as this webinar is over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be my first uh, advice. Um, you get it now. Um, so, um, you know, if, if, if you don't have a domain name, you need to, to get one. If you, don't, if you don't have one and you start with us and, you know, soon, we can help you uh, purchase that. Um, you can also go to GoDaddy Network Solutions um, to get your domain name registered. And what you really want to do is pick a name, you know, use your actual um, author name or your pen name. Um, you want to make sure that when you're picking a domain name, it, it represents your entire career so that, you know, when you're publishing multiple books and series, that you can use, you know, your one website under your domain for everything that you do as an author. So your website should really be your online hub for everything that you do. If someone comes to your website um, and, you know, needs to find you, they should be able to type in your name and, and find it easily. So that's, that's what I would definitely suggest, using your name. And if it happens to be a more common name, then I would suggest putting, uh, you know, if your name is you know, Rebecca Calejo, you're an author, but it's already taken. Chances are Calejo's not taken, but uh, I would put Rebecca Calejo author or Rebecca Calejo books.com. Um, just use something that, that helps define who you are a little bit more and makes it really easy for people to be able to find you. You want to use something short and sweet and memorable so that people can, once you meet them, they can immediately look you up and, and find who you are and see all your work online. All right, great. So I want to go pick a domain name that hopefully is my author name or at least my pen name. That And this, this for, for me, by the way, this wouldn't work because I, in, in theory I want a, an, a, pen, um, a website name that's easy to spell, easy to remember. Like mm -hmm. Section 101, you say that out loud uh, in a group or in a conference or on the airplane, you know, people can easily go to section101.com. Not so easy if you're Bill Van Orstel, right? How do you spell Van Orstel? So <laughs> BillVanOrstel.com is, well, it's great that I have that. You know, that's not a great domain name. Um, and, and then, so let me ask you this. If I have to choose Bill Van Orstel, if I can't get BillVanOrstel.com or JaneSmith.com, would I be better off getting JaneSmith.net, JaneSmith.us, JaneSmith.org? Or would I be better off getting jamesmithauthor.com? What, what's your feeling about that? I would say that you want to get uh, jamesmithauthor.com, and uh, because that you know .coms are the most the popular domain names, and if you're you're competing against someone who has your name as a .com and you have the .net, you're 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 going to get lost with search engines. Search engines um, are going to find that person first if they've their website especially longer and their domains registered longer um, so you don't want to really cause any any other confusion and if you're an author you're making your website domain more specific so um, that's also better for search engines and people to be able to find you more easily if you have author or book in your your domain name people can search um, upon that so I would suggest doing the jamesmithauthor.com all right um, and you can always buy multiple domain names so jamesmith.com you know, dot, uh, author dot net or books dot net or dot com, and you can all take those and redirect them to point to the same website as well. So that's an option as well. Ah, so if there's another Bill Van Orsdale out there, and he's already got Bill Van dot com, and so I decide to go get Bill Van Orsdale author dot com or the Bill Van Orsdale dot com, if I go do the research and find out that that other Bill didn't also get BillVanOrsdale.net, BillVanOrsdale.org, BillVanOrsdale.family, whatever. I maybe I should go get those, buy those up, and cause them to redirect to my BillVanOrsdaleAuthor.com site. Yeah, you can you can definitely do that, and I think it, it definitely helps with uh, search engines right. being able to find your site and, and locate you. Okay, that sounds audience. tricky, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of redirects. Okay. So I've advanced the slide. We're on the, this is uh, Sandra Balzo. So this is a website that we have built with Sandra Balzo. It's, it's a live site. All of these sites that we're going to show you are examples of live sites. So SandraBalzo.com. 
Um, she is a murder mystery writer. She's written many books, and she's uh, written, uh, you know, two series. And for her, um, you know, Section 101 does many things. We, you can build out your website yourself, or we can help you with the design and build it for you. For Sandra, we really helped her with the design and really branded her website to really match, um, you know, her genre and, and the books that she writes. Most of her, store, her, her books, as you can see, Murder on the Orient, Espresso, um, she, they're based in uh, coffee stores, bookshops, uh, um, and there's this underlying uh, coffee theme. So what we did is we took some warm colors and really tried to brand the website uh, to Sandra. Um, you can see at the top here we've got her, her um, it's hard to see, but we have a few links in a black bar at the very top where she has uh, links to Amazon and Audible that basically uh, they're her main author pages on those websites. And that's uh, one of the first things that people can see when they go to her site is, okay, I can immediately go to Am I can immediately find her on Amazon, I can immediately find her on Audible if I, you know, to, to, uh, to purchase from her. And I can also find her on Facebook and Pinterest, Goodreads, and Twitter. Um, and make it really easy for people to find you there and to grow your fan base uh, as an author. And we also put in a Facebook like button. And what that does is um, you only have to insert your Facebook URL when you're putting this in. We can automatically generate your Facebook like button. And when people click it, it would automatically like your fan page on Facebook. And they wouldn't have to leave your website to do that. So that's really important as well. But as you can see, uh, she's got a large uh, banner right in the middle here, which is promoting her latest release, Murder on the Orient Espresso. And she's got the book cover on the side. She's got a blurb uh, written about the book. And then she's got a big uh, buy button, buy now. And it lists different formats for people to purchase their book, whether they're an ebook reader, they want to buy it in physical, or they're more of an audio book person. They can immediately click. And that's really the first thing that you see. Um, so, so Sandra really accomplishes her goal there by promoting and selling her book there. Um, also, some other cool features I wanted to point out on Sandra's site is that um, she's got an audio player uh, right below on the right side of her main image. And here you can stream one of her audio books. Um, and you can also click to buy or even download a sample. And this is all, these are all features that are built into the Section 101 platform. And she just needs to plug in an MP3 and a cover, and we can sort of make this happen. This audio player is sort of a built-in feature. Another cool feature that we offer is an email sign-up. So uh, we always tell all of our authors, and you'll see this on all the author pages that I'm going to show you, is that email sign-up is very, very important. So we encourage everybody to have one and we even have the tools for you to use to capture email addresses and send out email blasts to your audience and your readers. So that should always be prominent and available for people to sign up to connect with you. And then the last thing we're going to talk about on Sandra's homepage is she's got a really nice uh, catalog at the bottom there that says Ralph Sandy's titles. And here, this is a listing of all of her releases and you can click through on the arrows that Bill's circling and sort of browse through each title. And you can click on any of them to see more details about that particular book. Or below, you'll notice that there's more options to buy. You know, the more options you have to buy on your website, the more likely people are, people are going to click through and purchase. So it's always a good thing to have those all up front um, and center on the website. You know, I really like uh, Sandra's site. It is very warm. I love this little tagline she's got up, up at the top. You know, assuming that all of her uh, these murder mysteries occur in small towns, and uh, I think that's great. She she must have uh, some kind of marketing background. I mean, that's that's a great little tagline she wrote in there. <laughs> yeah, in fact, Sandra actually used to do uh, you know some PR um, a few years ago, so she definitely has her marketing hat on. She was, uh, she was very, she was very fun to work with. Yep, and I and I see down here. This these look like tweets from Sandra. So she must have you must yeah. have a tool that you can hook up to Twitter for her, so that everything she's tweeting gets automatically posted on this front page. Yeah, in fact, you just have to sign into your Twitter account through your your website, and we can automatically show the latest tweets on your website. 
You don't have to worry about updating that area. It automatically pulls in your latest tweets. And you can even set it to show you know, the five latest tweets or the three latest tweets and click through to a full page of your tweets. So that's a very flexible, um, integrated uh, feed that we have there. Fantastic. All right, that looks good. All right, so the next website, this is steveettinger.com. He is an author, speaker, a fitness expert, and he released his first book. It, it was a children's book uh, about fitness. And for his website, you know, it, it needs to be clean and, and kid-friendly, so you can see some of the graphics are cute and a little cartoonish. Um, but for him, it's about, you know, promoting his press, uh, that he's, got, he's really got uh, some great press. Um, people, self, uh, you know, on ESPN. So that's, you know, straight, right right there when you get to the site, you're able to see that, that this guy, has, has he's been, you know, doing this, and he, he's an expert in what he does. Yeah, that's um, like a so, big load of social proof right there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this guy means business. So, you know, you, you kind of already, uh, you know, you, you trust him. And, uh, you know, and his goal is really to, you know, promote his book and also engage with people so that he can, he speaks to a lot of elementary schools. So, um, you know, he's got uh, a spring seed to your school and a video at the top right that shows him speaking to children. And it's all right in front uh, of the home page, so you know exactly what he does. And he even has that nice tagline right below his logo, author, speaker, uh, fitness expert. Um, so, so, you know, you always want to be really clear when people get your website about what you do and what your goals are. And you can really tell that, you know, he, he likes working with children, he wants, he's a speaker, um, he knows what he's doing, and, you know, last but not least, he's got this really nice uh, integrated sign-up uh, underneath his YouTube uh, video, and here uh, he can capture people's email addresses. And this actually isn't using the Section 101 email tool, he actually integrated this and I believe it's MailChimp that he took and, um, and sort of integrated to the site so um, you can capture emails and send out through, through MailChimp and send out confirmation emails to people who sign up through this list. Well, that's great. So he can use MailChimp, for example, to do a double opt-in uh, to reconfirm mm -hmm. when people want to be on his list. Um, and when we, when we were looking at, the, 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 at Sandra's site, uh, was she using your email service, your email collector serve tool? Yes, she was. And then do you guys also have a double opt-in on yours? Um, we actually, uh, you know, we can customize it to do whatever you need. Most Got of it. our standard email tools um, don't come in with a double opt-in, but they do come in, they do come with a confirmation email. And you can, of course, opt out at any time, and we make sure we follow um, all those regulations. Yep. You know, and I love that... Um, we we have a we work with a lot of authors who bring not just nonfiction books to market, but prescriptive nonfiction books like what Steve must have here for kids. And mm -hmm. it's clear to me that you know Steve is using his book as a uh, I think as a business card to help you know spread the word, get more speaking engagements, and uh, build his um, his practice as a fitness expert. Um, I love this Definitely. this uh, embedded video up here. Um, so, like, for example, if he had a book trailer, he could put that up here on his home page. Yeah, exactly. You can embed um, any videos from, you know, YouTube or Vimeo, or even if you have, like, a, the actual file, MOV file, you can upload that. We have, you know, private players um, that, you, that we can host your, your video content on the site. But, yes, um, you know, we encourage authors, you know, book trailers seem to be becoming more popular these days. and. Um, you know, we encourage all authors to have, um, you know, especially if you have multiple books, to have a, a page on your website designated to that book and to upload a trailer or any other specific content that relates to that book so people can find it on your website. Ah, so I don't have to use uh, YouTube, for example, for my to host my video and then have it poke it through on your site. You have your own media server that will, you know, avoid all those ads and the other things I don't like about YouTube and let me just have my video be on my site unmolested. Totally. <laughs> we do. Okay, great. So that's already built in. Now, this at the bottom where it says bring Steve to your school, does that lead to a web form where someone would fill out information and ask Steve to get back to them? Yes. Uh, that would click through to a form 
where uh, people can fill out the information and uh, you know reach Steve, and he can get. Get Great. So, so you've got a lead form t functionality too. Okay, that's fantastic. All right, let me let me. Uh, I'm going to switch tools now. Let's move us on to the next person. Okay, here's uh, historical, historical fiction. It looks like. So this is Karen Abbott, and she's got uh, a more simplified site. You know, she doesn't have a ton of content, um, and she really wanted to keep it very simple. But um, you can still tell uh, if you look at her site. You know, it's very nice and branded. This is actually a do-it-yourself site that she. She built with one of her, uh, she had a, a designer friend who helped build this out. Well, yes, it was on our, our do-it-yourself platform. And uh, what she did is uh, she's got that nice slideshow area, which is promoting her her latest book, uh, Liars, Pinterest, Soldier, Spy. And she's even got a really nice press quote um, floated in there uh, from the New York Times. Um, so. Um, She's able to promote herself uh, that way in her book, and you can also read a sample, uh, learn more, and also see looking of her characters. She's really big about, um, you know, making sure everybody understands each character, and she's got even pages designated to that that really give full descriptions and backgrounds um, for characters in her book. So Karen, have, Karen looks like a good example of an author who's adding or or um, making available to her fans extra content that's not in her book. So I assume when it says characters, those are probably character sketches, descriptions, maybe even you know uh, potential pictures of what the characters might look like that just aren't in her book. And right, she's using yeah, so that as part of the method to reach out to her fans and build fans. Yeah, it's a great way to really get people um, engaged more online because it's like this is additional exclusive content that I can't get anywhere else and I want to engage with Karen more and, and learn more about the book. I mean, you're a fan, so it's a, it's a great way to, to get people active and on your website by providing this sort of exclusive type of content. And I also really like about this page, she's got a uh, professional author photo here. I mean, she is, this is not something that, you know, there's no arm cropped in around, you know, cropped out around her shoulders and some head leaning in and you see one ear. It looks like she had a, a professional uh, shot taken so that she could use that to help look um, more engaging for her fans. Yeah, she has some really nice press shots. You know, she um, you know she takes it very seriously, and I, I and I think it's great when authors have a nice professional um, snapshot. It helps you, you know, immediately see you know who the person who the author is. I think it's really great when authors do have a picture of themselves on the homepage because mm -hmm. people can sort of try to, um, you know, they feel more, um, more, you know, personal. It's just, you yep. know, it's, it's, you're learning more about them. And I think it's, it's a really nice touch that she, she went out and got some nice photos done. So. Yeah, probably critical for nonfiction authors, um, not as important for fiction authors, but clearly Karen has done right. a great job with it. And, and uh, I think that was a great choice. Yeah, definitely. Okay, anything else we want to talk about the, on this one? Um, no, let's go to the next one. All right. This one looks like uh, either memoir or a biography. Yes, this is Corey Taylor, and he's actually a, he's a musician, and he's the, the lead man for Stone Sour and Slipknot, which are pretty, you know, in the you know, more heavy rock and roll type of uh, genres in music. And he actually wrote a couple books about his life and um, just being involved in the music industry and how crazy it gets. So he really wanted to have his own branded website. And I believe, uh, yeah, this is thecoreytaylor.com. You can check it out. And uh, for him, you know, it's important that he lets his fans know when they come to the site that, and maybe there's some new fans, but that at the very top of the site, you can see the names of his bands that he's most well known for, which are Stone Sour and Slipknot. So he uses that area. Um, very nicely and making sure that he's still connected to, to those pieces. And he also has, you know, his own fan pages. Um, beyond his, his fans, he's got, you know, his own uh, personal, you know, uh, fan page and Twitter following, and he makes that really easily accessible right on that top header. And then, he, you know, he's got a nice logo and everything sort of branded to him in his, uh, his book. Um, 
got a really nice, huge uh, a, a banner promotional area, uh, area right there where it's got the title of his book, so that it's available now, and it's got a call to action, buy yours now. So anytime you click anywhere on that banner, it would immediately take you to purchase the book. And I think that, you know, that's really important for him. You know, this is the, the whole goal of his website um, is to, you know, market and promote the book. And I think he does a really great job of it. Um, he also, you know, he's got his latest news below. He also does a comic book. And, of course, you see the reoccurring theme of the sign-up form uh, and the Twitter right there on the pages. Right. Now, I'm starting to see what I think is a pattern here. Uh, tell me if I'm interpreting this the right way. It looks like, you know, I look at these three sites, it looks like they're set for a sort of a standard width. So there must be some sort of industry best practice out there that says you want your website to be uh, X pixels wide, and so your, your platform is set up to do that with the templates. Yeah, of course. So we've got tons of different layouts you can choose from, and we build in our best practices in knowing what really works well across all different screen sizes and mobile devices. So we've designed our layouts to be in its 960 pixels wide, and that's sort of the optimal width of a website. And you can also see that most of these uh, uh, authors that, I'm, that we're showing you today have their, you know, their logo and, the, and their navigation and promotional, big promotional area all right at the top of the page. And we do that on purpose because we call that above the fold. And what Bill's doing is he's circling um, what it would look like if you were to go to the CoreyTaylor.com. Most people would only see um, that part of the website uh, first. Um, and, you know, those, are, those have some of the most important elements. Obviously, to purchase the book is, is very important. So we make sure that anything above the fold, um, you know, is, is, is really accomplishing the goal of the website. Because otherwise, you know, people may not scroll, but, you know, hopefully they will. But it, in case they don't, at least you're still getting um, to promote the book. Got it. Okay. So um, you just took these. You had a little, you had a little taller screen than uh, most, the most average web surfers do. And that's why it shows more. Okay, so now we're looking at the educational. This is obviously another nonfiction um, author. Mm -hmm. He's got a few different, yeah, a few different widgets on his page, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got two, two. Uh, he's got featured videos there, and those are pulling from YouTube, and those are some interviews that he's done. So um, he, Mike King, is a professor over at Berkeley College of Music, and he wrote a book called Music Marketing Book. And um, this website is really all about um, that particular book. And he, you know, he, he does, um, he, he speaks a lot. He writes a lot of blogs to in, engage with people and really educate them on how to uh, market their music and grow their careers. Um, he teaches a lot of um, online courses as well, which he, he works out. And one of the really interesting things that um, is different from the other sites we've been showing you is he gives away a free chapter of his book um, on his home page. And um, there's a button that says, Get It Now. And that's actually, uh, if you click on that, you, you're required to sign up for his email list. But when you sign up, you're getting a confirmation email with a link to download a free chapter. So he's actually incentivizing people to sign up to his list and giving them something back. Um, in return of signing up to his, his email list. Um, so yeah, so that's that's, really that's cool. sort of a that's sort of a premium sir a premium thank you. It's like join my list, yeah. <laughs> and in return, I'm going to give you the first act of my book, or the first couple of chapters, or um, or the secrets to um, saving money when you buy cars. So now that that get it now button and that little widget there. Is that uh, one of yours, or did he do that? Did he bring that in from somewhere else? So uh, Mike King is uh, really close with uh, the company called Top Spin Media. That's topspinmedia.com, and uh, they provide uh, an email platform. They mostly work with um, musicians, and he, you know, he works with um, you know a music college. So he he works with them, and they provided this widget and the ability to. Uh, download, but anybody can use their service. 
and they have a great email marketing tool and you can get analytics and stats and you send out email blasts and see who's opening and where they are when they open and um, that sort of thing. So uh, that's really valuable to, for him to use and uh, yeah, anybody can, can sign up for, yep. for that. Yeah, but if, if, if I want to sort of keep everything I'm doing in sort of one place, uh, for example, at Section 101, do you have a tool like this where someone can click and download a, a, a sample of my book or download my book or my first book of my series, which is for free? Or Yeah, we do. Uh, so as I was showing you in the audio player, uh, that was an example of how you can download um, an audio an audio book um, like when we were looking at standards site. But, yeah, you can also upload, you know, PDFs of chapters um, and give them away for free on your site. Um, you know, you can require them to sign up to the email list and, you know, when they click through to sign up, there's always a thank you page and you can give them, um, you know, a free chapter of your book on the thank you page. So that would also, um, you know, you can market that as, hey, sign up for my email list and I'll give you a, a free chapter of, of the book. Yep. Uh, there's different ways to do it, but, um, yeah, it's all, all the, the capabilities are built in. And, yeah, you can upload any type of file to your website. Um, to the back end, and we'll host it for you, and then you can give it out as you wish. Got it. Now, I noticed that Mike's got two videos on his front page, and I think you said these are uh, these are looped in from YouTube. Uh, and then mm -hmm. I see he's, al he's also got a, a whole section of his website devoted to videos. Um, mm -hmm. What do you know about that? Are those all from YouTube as well? Or are they from you as well? What, what's he doing there? Yeah, he's got he uses Vimeo and YouTube, and um, what we have is a we have a nice video layout uh, page that's already built in. So mm -hmm. all you have to do if you have say if you have a ton of videos and you want to so maybe there are a bunch of book trailers or maybe you have book trailers and you want to try to organize them by series or so. Well, you can have a video page where it features you know one main video, and then you can have sort of like a, a video index where people can sort of sort through. And you can organize those by series um, and different playlists, and um, it's really, really user friendly. So that that sort of functionality is all built in. And like I said, you can import all your videos from your YouTube channel um, with a click of a button. You can upload uh, or, or embed Vimeo clips uh, videos, and you can also upload your own um, video files. Yeah. Got it. Now, I've missed two questions. I've been paying too much attention to my little highlighting exercises. Uh, Dave, <laughs> David had a question for us uh, actually uh, 20 minutes ago or 15 minutes ago. He said, uh, can you connect Facebook on your website also? And I'm betting he's asking that uh, uh, in relation to this Twitter, um, Twitter box that we're seeing on several of the author's websites, uh, which is, as I make Facebook posts, is there a tool that I can have on my website that reflects those. Yes, totally. So uh, Facebook actually, um, we we don't have a built-in uh, widget for Facebook yet, but Facebook provides you with tons of different widgets, and it's very easy to embed on your site. Uh, but but what we what we think is I think is a really cool tool that we offer is the ability to you know publish a, a news item or a blog or a press piece, and and you can actually push that out. To Facebook and Twitter, um, right from your website. So it's really easy to do. And what the, you know, the goal of that is, you know, you're you're pushing out some content, and you're also not publishing the entire thing to Facebook or Twitter, but you're you're posting a link back to your website. So it's sort of like, hey, I'm I'm posting something. I'm posting a new blog to my website. Here's the title of my blog. A teaser. Now here's a link to my site. Go so check it out. So what you're doing is you're um, you know, you're saying, hey, I, I've uploaded some exclusive content to my website. It's not on Facebook, but I want my fans from Facebook to go to my website. And that's great in, you know, driving traffic. And hopefully, when, the, when your fans and readers go to your website, they'll sign up for your email list. And uh, then you'll always have that direct connection to, to that reader and to, that, to your fans. Nice. On Facebook, you know, you never know if your posts are going to get seen. So. We're always about publishing to Facebook and then driving traffic back, rather Got than it. you know having Facebook widgets on your website. Mm -hmm. So, so my so the idea here is that number one, I I create one blog entry, for example, and uh, when I 
when I submit that blog entry on my website, because it's so easy to do, I click some check boxes and it goes out. Uh, I, I frame how it goes out on Twitter, on Tumblr, on Facebook, uh, I don't know, maybe on Pinterest. And the idea then is that as a marketer of my author brand and my books, I want to drive traffic back to my website rather than necessarily generating traffic out on those 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 um, social sites. I want those social sites to drive to me rather than the other way around. Yeah, I think that's that's really the ultimate goal because you know, in the end, you're going to have all these different users on Twitter and and Facebook, and you really want to drive them all to one home base so that you can. Uh, really engage with them and showcase your brand and your website's going to have everything you do rather than Twitter, which is like, you know, you can't really archive anything on Twitter. Things are hard to find. And then Facebook, you just, you never know who's really going to see your post, maybe 10% of your audience. So uh, at least you know with your website you're safe and it's the content that you want to show people and it's everything about you. Got it. Now, um, uh, now Diana also has a question. She says, uh, and this is this is perfectly relevant for me since I have a face made for radio. She says, "What options do you suggest for your photos if you're not as young or beautiful as Karen?" <laughs> you know what's funny about that is we actually have um, we have a built-in um, image editor in our platform, so that when you're uploading an image, you can put really cool filters on them, like black and white or uh, sepia. Um, you can crop things, and you can uh, make them faded a little bit. Um, you know, we actually have a more vintage filter as well. But um, you know, there's there's things you can do within our tool that that can help the images look great. Um, or you know, uh, you can always talk to. We have a, a graphic design team, and if you want us to ever, you know, do any work on a photo, we could we could also help you out there. And I, I have to say, Diana, um, I, I, uh, I've never been very happy with my pictures. And um, a, a company that I worked at said, you know, we all need executive photos, so everybody go down and meet with this. And the, the wonders that uh, a professional photographer can do with filters and lighting and poses and funny comments, um, I think, can help. So. Uh, if you've got someone that does that or can find a, a studio that will give you the uh, electronic images for not too, not too much money, I would definitely take a look into that. Uh, Catherine's got a question. She says, would a different photo work, like a picture of you, a, a picture with your newly bought cat that you adore and it's summer and you're in a dress and you're beaming with joy? No, it's not me, Whistles. So, um, <laughs> so I think so. I, I just the, the reason yeah. I recommend and like author photos is because, uh, whether I am um, whether I should be on hot or not, having a photo of me as an author uh, just helps make me real and helps me connect with um, with my readers. I mean, you could you you could argue that that's a that the choice that Karen made here might actually be a risky choice. She's got a very very good looking picture here that might turn some readers off, or it might bring more readers to fold. Or it might not, and mm -hmm. and you right. So, in any case, um, let's let's look yeah, at the next I one. Think... Sorry, Rebecca, go ahead. Okay, um, okay. So uh, this is Tim Timothy W Long dot com. Uh, he is a horror and zerto author, and um, for this website, I just really wanted to show um, just how how different these sites can can look. I mean, you know, we took lots of, you see there's blood splatters everywhere. There's like the, uh, the Twitter bird has got blood dripping down from it. It really fits his genre and his brand. Um, and so we, we helped him really personalize this um, and customize it to, to, to help uh, readers really connect and feel like they're in sort of Timothy Long's world. Um, you can see he's got that bloody hand in the background. Um, and he actually can change, he changes his background of his site all the time, and it's so easy to do. So he's got tons of these gross photos that, that he's always shocking his uh, his fans and readers with every time they come to the site. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, his, uh, his branded website, uh, and, yeah, he, like uh, Bill was just showing, he, he does have the links at the top. And you can choose to have those links at the top of your website. You can choose to have that black bar with social networks. Um, 
or you don't have to. It's just a nice option to have. It's sort of a, a big call out when people get to the site. Got it. Okay. Um, his, you know, his design is very dense. He's got a lot of information, a lot of text, a lot of photos, yeah. a lot of book covers. Um, compared to some of the other yeah. ones, he's choosing a denser layout. Yeah, and the great thing about this is, you know, when we were working with him, we wanted to show, you know, the flushed out version of the site, which would be this. And then we scaled it back a little bit. We wanted to say, hey, Tim, this is what it would look like if you just took some of the pieces of content down, and you could link out those on several in your navigation. Um, but he, you know, he's very active, and he, he wants to have all this front and center. Um, but, you know, whenever he wants to, he can remove some of these um, pieces of content um, and just take them down from the page for now and add them back whenever he wants. It's just, it's that easy to really change the look and feel of your site um, with our platform. Got it. And what's Tim's notes down here on the very bottom underneath the fold? The bottom right. Um, th those, those are, uh, uh, so that's really just about what he's up to, um, maybe about um, what he's thinking. Maybe instead of a, um, a tweet, he just has some notes about a particular book. Um, it can be, that can be whatever you want. We have some other authors that we've, you know, personalized a notes section for them. And sometimes they even use that uh, for specific books. So on, like, specific book pages, like, Sandra Balzo uses her notes as, um, like, coffee tips, um, like how, how to make the best. Uh, pot of coffee. Um, so I, I, I think she. Uh, we're going to show you what a book details page on her website looks like, and I think uh, she's got some of those on there, so we can show that in a little bit. Okay, great. Uh, so Julia Tagan, um, she is a romance author, and she launched um, uh, this website with us with her new book, A Question of Class, and it was the, you know, the first book that she wrote. And she wanted it to be very elegant looking and uh, very simple and clean, which is, you know, our designers, um, we all worked with her on this. And, it, you know, it looks very nice, um, very much in her brand. You can tell that she's a romance author right when you get to the site. Um, again, that she utilizes that, that top area to promote the book. And she's got her buy links built in there for, you know, Amazon, iTunes, Zillow, um, Kindle. And, uh, She's got a nice, uh, more professional image as, as well, and also a link to her Goodreads. And of course, she's got sign up and Twitter. And she blogs a lot, so she's got all the latest, um, which is under the flag show. And that's, you know, that she she just blogs a lot about um, what she's up to. Um, she's writing another book, um, so this is going to be sort of turning into um, a series. But yeah, the website does exactly what she wants. She's, she's able to showcase who she is um, and connect with her, her authors. Yep, yeah, I, see, um, I see she's got a little tagline. Again, I like her tagline for her, her, it's her author tagline. And then she's got a more uh -huh. simplified connect with me. So I'm guessing then that she's only active in social media on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Goodreads. So she doesn't have Pinterest. She doesn't have LinkedIn. She doesn't have right Tumblr. So, um, so I don't have to choose all of them. I can just choose the ones where I'm active. Exactly. Yeah, we you know we definitely don't want to force anybody to try to keep up with another social network that they don't need to. Um, so this is all up to you, um, and you know we encourage you to put the links that you know that you're comfortable with putting up there. I mean, if you're on Twitter but you haven't tweeted in months, you know you you know maybe Twitter is not for you, and you don't want to post the link up there if you're not going to be active on that that social network. So yeah, make sure when you do connect your socials that you're you know, connecting to the ones that you're going to be on the most. Now, I think when we were talking earlier, you mentioned to me that uh, I think this is juliatagon.com and that this is her pen name. Yes, it is. It is actually her pen name. She um, she actually goes by Fiona Kirk, and she writes uh, and blogs on a lot of um, magazines and um, on online. And uh, she she launched her pen name um, with this website in the, the new book. So she's She's got this, and she. We're also relaunching her Fiona Kirk website, which is kind so, of Okay, so she decided that that managing two websites and driving traffic to two websites was, although it would be harder and more expensive to do, she wanted to do that because the two sides of her writing artistry were so different that she really wanted a distinct place for each. 
Exactly. Yeah. I mean, here she's a romance novel, uh, you know, writer, and then Fiona de Kirk is more about health and nutrition. Um, so yeah, it's totally two different two different things. So she did want to separate that a bit. Okay. All right. Uh, our Berry Flowers. True crime. So our <laughs> our Berry Flowers is a very interesting author. Um, he's been writing for a while and. He actually has uh, many different genres that he writes within. And um, when he first came to us, he sort of had this website with all these different books and all these links, and it was sort of, um, you know, not as, as effective as me as, as, for, as a viewer to be able to find what I was looking for on his site. So what we did was we took um, all the different genres that he writes in, which are mystery and thrillers. He writes true crime, young adult, romance. Um, and we made those uh, navigation links on his site so that when you get to his site, you know, you, you automatically see, yeah, he's got a tagline, he's an internationally best-selling author. It looks like he does crime um, as well, but in the navigation it clearly states, like, go here for true crime, go here for young adults, go here to check out the romance. So that's how we were able to accomplish, um, you know, organizing all the different genres that he writes in all the different books. Got it. And so does this mean then that for under each of his genres, he can have a separate uh, carousel or catalog for each genre so that when I go to those pages, yeah, I'll only see, my, only see the catalog of stuff in that genre? Yeah, you can. Um, you know, that carousel is sort of, um, it could be all releases or it could be featured or a specific genre. You Got can, it. You're able to control what shows up in that carousel. Okay, good, and he's got his Twitter attached. He's got his blog. He's got a summary here of his blog post. Looks like he's got a blog here. So I'm guessing then that as he posts to the blog, this latest blog post widget is automatically updating. I don't have to do things twice. Exactly. So everything uh, sort of flows as a feed. If you're posting a blog, any anywhere you have a, a blog feed, it's going to automatically update that area and it's going to show the latest post at the very top. So you don't have to worry about trying to reorganize your content. It just automatically happens. And then, you know, say, you know, what happens to that last, that third post on the website? Well, that automatically rolls into the blog index. So people, you know, that content doesn't go away. We are, we're archiving it for people to go back and be able to read all of your work. So it still lives on your site. It's just not being featured on the home page front and center. Got it. Okay. Now here's a, this one's much more open, a little plainer. This is Lori Lewis. Right. This is Lori Lewis, um, and she writes about self-help and a lot of books about, um, you, know, you know, for freelancers. And, you know, she wanted a very simple site. She actually came to us, and she would never had a website before. Um, she was a little intimidated about, you know, the whole online, uh, just, just getting herself online and getting her career up to speed. But, um, you know, we trained her on the platform, we helped her set things up, and now she's able to go in and update things herself. Um, and she's actually an interesting case because LoriLewis.com was taken, and since she lives in New York City, and she also is not only an author, but she also gives tours around Central Park, she decided that she wanted to have her URL be LoriLewisNYC.com. So you can check her out there. and. Um, you know that 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 has been working for her, and um, she yeah like I said she's able to, to update the site and connect with her fans, and she even got on uh, Twitter and she's got a LinkedIn profile, so we're making progress with her and, and the social network. As well. Yeah, that's fantastic. So basically, once I set up the site, there's an interface where I can go and make a new blog post or add a new book to my carousel or update my links. I don't. It's not actually mm -hmm. like I have to go in and redesign the site every time I want to add new content. No, not at all. You can double click on text and edit it. You can always add things. You can move things around. It's very user friendly. And um, what what really put Lori Lewis at ease is that we have built in uh, live chat, and we have a, uh, you can call us, and we have an online help desk. So we're all about just trying to be there when you need us. All right, fantastic. All right. So, so like we were saying, um, you know, Section 101, we're, we're very unique in that we have the specific author features that we've been reviewing to really drive your success, whether you're promoting your book, um, you have the e-commerce integration, um, you're able to engage your, your new and current readers, and you can list your titles in both series. 
and um, last but not least, seamlessly connect with your social network. All right. So uh, now we're now we're taking a look here at back. We're back to Sanders' basic home page. What is this cost? And and you know, okay. So there's what it costs on section 101. But what's your advice generally to an author? So this is my first book. I'm just getting started. My book's not even out. So now I'm paying money for this initial marketing thing. What what should I think about spending? What what's too much? What's too little? Um, what's your what's your feeling about that? I feel like a lot of uh, you know first you know, uh, authors who are writing are putting out their first book. You know they don't have a huge marketing budget, but it is important to make um, an investment in your website because it's something that you'll have. Um, you know, for hopefully if you choose the right service for a long time and it's scalable as you grow. So you have to think of it as an investment. Um, so you don't want to just hire some someone for free or a friend to do you know to do it for free because you never know when that person's going to be available. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I suggest is we've got uh, three different services. Um, basically, you can build out your website yourself, and it doesn't cost anything. Um, and then it's just uh, 24 bucks a month for hosting and the email tools and customer service per month. Um, then um, on the right side, I'm going to skip over there, um, we have like a, uh, if you need a lot of help, we have premium service where we can completely work with you on the design and build of your website. So we do it all for you and then we train you on how to use it. But there's this new thing that we started because we found that so many authors, um, you know, they didn't want to spend a lot of money for premium and they wanted a little bit more help than do it yourself. So we created Do It Yourself Plus. And what this is, is we help, we walk you through the process and help you set up your site. And then we give you design recommendations and pick out fonts and colors and the right layout for you. And this is, is a great deal. It's a thousand to two thousand to start. But we're also giving away a 50% discount, which I'll talk about um, in a few minutes here. So you can have a great website on our Do It, Your Plus, uh, Do it Yourself Plus platform for um, starting at 500 bucks. So wow. um, that's what I've been recommending to uh, a lot of the authors, and we've gotten a great response on that. All right, great. So I'm not a web designer. I know that I've given my opinion for what it's worth on the websites we've looked at before. What are the, you know, but you've worked with a lot of artists and particularly authors. What are the key elements that should be on an author's front page? What are the things that, whether I do it with Section 101 or anywhere else, what must go on my front page above the fold or, or you know, maybe below the fold, but the things I can't miss? Oh, okay. So um, if you click through to the next slide, um, I, you know, definitely it's all about, you know, promoting your books and your releases. So the most important thing is you got to have that big call to action um, right on the home page. So large, prominent promotional spaces are really important. And um, Bill, he's circling um, the, the big banner that we talked about earlier. Um, it This helps people know what you're up to, what, what what's the newest thing you've been working on, and here's, how, here's where you go to buy. So that is um, by far the number one thing that, um, that that you should be making sure you're accomplishing on your website. That you have a large promotional space above the fold, and you uh, have buy links. And and Rebecca, I you know sometimes I walk by our web team. Is is this what we call the hero space or the hero image or the hero spot? Uh, yes, I I would say that 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 area right there that's where people are gonna um, most likely look when they first get to okay. the website. All right. So if we so, go to the mm -hmm. next. Oh, go ahead. Go nope. to the, uh, the next slide. So the next thing that I what we've been talking about throughout the entire webinar is you know your email sign up. Um, I we couldn't stress this enough. Uh, you have to have an email sign up and an email tool on your home page. It's got to be prominent and a, a way for, for fans to connect with you. It's your direct connection to to your readers and your audience. So if you capture that, you're, you're, you're going to reach them. And email is really the number one driver to action and to sales. So very, very important that you continue to, to grow your list and really utilize that. So email would be another big thing to use. Mm -hmm. David's got a question for us. He just jumped in and he said, hey, um, do we recommend creating a press release? Uh, and if so, do we post it on the website somewhere? Do we link to it? Is it in my, do I have a, do I have a press kit menu across the top? What, what, what do you, how do you feel about that? 
Uh, yeah, actually, uh, uh, Sandra, I think, recently put up a, a press page where, you know, she's got, um, for her, she's got a lot of uh, press downloadable images that she put up that are high res for print. But um, you can also find um, a lot of authors of ours, you know, they PDF their bio and they have it for download or a press release. Like, you, you definitely can have that, um, and you know we encourage authors to, to do that. I think it's really helpful for people to be able to grab exactly what what they need from your website. Um, they don't have to wait on you, and you know just makes it easy for everybody. Right. I think you know w one thing that we tell all nonfiction authors, particularly, is you when you're when you're getting ready to launch, as soon as you're ready to tell people publicly about your book, even if you even if it's not quite on sale yet on Amazon, you've got to have your press kit, and there's you know, there's four things, there's eight things that have to be in your press kit, but it's just as you say, Rebecca, they've, it has to be available without your interaction. And uh, the, the best place for a press kit is somewhere on your author website. Um, mm -hmm. Robert's got a question. Exactly. He says, are mouse over menus a good idea with several pages organized? I think I read that right. Mouse are mouse over, over menus a good idea with several pages organized? Um, I think what they're saying is uh, maybe a sub navigation where if you click, you know, you scroll over, maybe it's books and then it, it lists, uh, you know, the different books before you click on books mm -hmm. page, sort of like a, a drop down sub menu. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think it's more important, um, you know, anytime you have pop ups on a website, uh, most of the time, you know, search engines can't really read that properly. So what we really encourage, and we can we can build pop-ups as well, um, or you know drop-down menus. But what we do is, like for example, for the books page, um, we sort of um, list out um, all your books, and um, you can click through to read more information. So it's more of a more of an um, I guess visually appealing, and uh, it, it gives you more information than just a, a simple drop-down. And it's also better for search engines because you're actually Putting that information on a page, um, it's actual text so that you know you can be found. Um, yeah, and information I, about your books will get picked up. And I think if I added something to that, Robert, I would say the following: that um, you have to keep in mind that uh, many people will visit your website from a mobile device where they will not be using a mouse, and so m right. no mouse over is going to work. So anything that's any um, expressions or menus or, or widgets that would only appear with a mouse over are literally invisible to your mobile visitors. Um, and and, and mo you're going to get a lot of mobile traffic to your site. Okay, Catherine's just reminded me that A, we're running out of time, and that um, B, uh, she we haven't told her yet how to do this 50% off. She hasn't found anything on the website. Uh, that's because it's a special author. I think Catherine that uh, Rebecca is going to tell us about that in a minute. We better jump forward here. Uh, so connecting with your social networks, looks like we've got lots of built-in widgets yeah, and pins available. Yep, we, we've covered this, you know, uh, integration, sharing capabilities, all that stuff built in. Okay, great. And uh, selling my book from my website, can I do it? Can I take print orders? Can I sell my PDF? How, how do I do that? So uh, we have a, a great uh, DB easy e-commerce integration um, where you can enter in all the different retailers that you're selling from and um, have one click to buy, um, have, you know, as we were showing you before, you have all the different formats that you can purchase the book in and there's just buy links everywhere. Um, you do, we do have the ability for you to sell, um, we, have, we have a simple PayPal integration if you actually want to sell like physical books from your website, so we can do that um, and we're showing you Julia Tagan now to um, instead of the format icons, she prefers to use actual um, icons for Amazon, Kindle, iTunes, and, um, so you can do that as well. So the more, you know, she's just showcasing all the places her book is available. Yep, so the short answer is yes, not only can I link out to the retail stores that are carrying my book, but I can also, uh, I can take orders for print books. I could send people to the Barnes & Noble store where, assuming I'm in Ingram, they could buy my print book. Uh, and I also, at, at the very least, can link in uh, through a third-party service like Gumroad and sell sell my my ebook online as well. Yeah. Okay, key key features that we haven't talked about that we want to just in our last couple minutes here not miss. Yeah. So 
this is a, a, an example of a book details page. So if you were to click through to learn more about the murder on the Orient Espresso, um, you see here um, on the first call out, you can sample the book. Um, you can actually click through and read an excerpt of the book or listen to it on audio if you have it available. And of course, there's tons of promotions to buy. Then you also have the ability to post um, different promotions. And Sandra's got a Goodreads book giveaway. Uh, she built a widget and posted it on her site, so that's really great. And then at the bottom there, she's got upcoming events. So she's, you know, she's got book signings and things like that, and she can list those out there. And once that event passes, it automatically rolls to an archive and shows the next upcoming date. Got it. Okay. Um, here, this looks like a list of all my all my titles. So I've got some organization tools available. Yeah. Exactly. This is a nice uh, preset layout that you can use. This is actually a series page, so it's really great for people to be able to find your series and then know wh what the order is. Um, you know, it's really easy. We've got the numbers all big and bold, and then you can even um, see the book details. You can buy it, and you can also put your own reviews in there. Um, mm -hmm. Any you know press reviews or you know, any customer reviews, you can you can post those right in there. Yeah, I forgot to ask you before. I think I saw on Sandra's site or someone else's some sort of widget that looked like it was pulling reviews, live reviews, right off of uh, Amazon onto my author page. Yes, so you can easily integrate uh, Amazon's uh, customer reviews if you want to. You can turn that on and off for each book, and uh, it's it's really it's really great for people to be able to see those right up the front and center and um, get an idea for how the book is. Got it. Okay. Um, while everyone's looking at this slide, let's let's jump on David's question, and then we might have to call it a night. Uh, David says, "Do you recommend allowing people to buy the book and then you send it signed?" with or without extra cost, since you have to order it and have it and have to mail it, uh, mail it to you and then mail it back. So, um, uh, David, I would say that if you're going to sell premium versions of your book, that is, uh, printed books that you've ordered yourself and signed, um, uh, and you can obviously set up a way to, to allow your customers to order those from your website, that might be the most cost-effective way. Um, and, and by the way, that might be a great way to drive people to your website because they can't get a signed version of your book from CreateSpace or Amazon or Barnes & Noble. They can only get it from your website. And there are lots of uh, collectors and readers who like that stuff, especially your super fans. Okay, Rebecca, um, looks exactly. like we've got, a, we've got a free trial. We've got 50% off. How does this work? Yeah, so uh, everybody, if, you, if you're interested in working with Section 101, we'd love to work with any and, and all of you. Um, you can email me at Rebecca at Section101.com um, or go to Section101.com to get started. And basically, we're giving away a free 90-day trial on our do-it-yourself platform so you're building out the site yourself. And then if you're interested in having us help you with the design and the setup, we'll give you 50% off that uh, $1,000 cost. So it's come in at um, 500 bucks. So it's a really wow. great deal. Whichever option you guys choose to do, um, we'd love to hear from you and uh, love to really, really would love to help you and work with you. And and Rebecca, so let's just say, just for the sake of argument, I've already got a website at BillVanOrsdell.com, which I don't, but if I were a little more on the ball, I might. And I want to transition from that website to BillVanOrsdell.com, but hosted over here and built with the Section 101 program. Is that easy? Is it hard? Do I, is there going to be downtime? You know, in five sentences, how does that work? Uh, so you're, you're saying if you already have a website and you want to migrate over to our platform? Right. I, my website looks good, yeah. but it doesn't look as good as Sandra's does, and I'd love to have something like that. Yeah. So uh, what we'll do, um, you know, we, we can help you uh, migrate the assets over, and what that means is we'll you can take some of the things that you want to pull over, like your images and some of your content, and we can easily put that on our platform. Um, it's really easy to build out a site with us, and you can even do it, and it takes 15 to 30 minutes to get started. So um, it's very, very easy to do. And then, um, and then and once it's all done, I just transfer the, the pointer for the URL? Yeah, so, so when you start building the site, it's on our production server, so there's no interruption with your live site. Um, and when you're ready to launch your site on our platform, we'll make the switch for you. We just need your domain registrant login, like your GoDaddy or Network Solutions login, and we'll make the switch for you and would we'll automatically uh, push that site to be the live one over the, the your other site, and there's no downtime. Fantastic. 
Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't, we don't usually go over. I'm five minutes over or six minutes over. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. If you have any questions, you, again, you're welcome to throw them up in the question box or follow up by email with uh, Rebecca or me. And uh, I'm also happy to send these slides out to anybody that would like them. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, this has been great. I, I found it very valuable. I know I learned a lot today. And uh, I really you. appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun, and I hope everybody learned something uh, from this. And hopefully we can do this again. All right, fantastic. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you, everybody. Have All a right. great evening. All right, have a great evening. Bye. Bye.